Um, I think it would be challenging for a number of reasons because obviously you're the defending champions and this wasn't part of the uh, the blueprint for this season. You wouldn't have expected to see it. Whether you're unhappy with it or not, it's what will happen because you can't affect the outcomes anymore because you've had the opportunity in the January transfer window and you've had the opportunity in the summer one. Um, obviously, the summer one, you'd never have seen the challenges they've got. What I can't odds is the... I, I know they got a result against Leipzig, but Leipzig were in the business of self-harm. You know, both goals that they gave... To Liverpool, I know Liverpool had to play in that game, and Leipzig came with a decent reputation, but they were poor, and I think we have to call it for what it was. But I'm so surprised. I picked Liverpool to beat Everton, which means that ultimately Everton were always going to win with my picking criteria. <laughs> um, but I, I look at it and say, I look at the front three. I understand the arguments, I really do, and I bow to far greater knowledges about people like Thiago not slowing up the momentum of Liverpool. But the front three of Liverpool are so poor at the moment. Firmino looks a mile off. You know, Salah, you know, I I admire him for the goals he scores. I loathe him for the manner in which he cheats and dives around. But you look at the front three of Liverpool and they've got no spark, no movement. Liverpool have got no pace in their game. And I understand that you've got to build from a strong platform. But they are a country, they're not even in the same zip code of what they looked like two months ago. But you would say, Simon, when it comes to being the cheat in chief, Salah certainly lives up oh, to the title. There's a variety of people out there. I mean, I, I said something the other day, and people start saying, well, "Oh, is it because he's not English and he's not white?" And you have to sit there thinking, "No, it's because he does it so regularly." The challenge is that you, I, I listened to Jamie Carragher's reaction on. I know that Jamie's got mixed emotions about having played for Liverpool and supporting Everton, right? but looking at his reaction to Salah flinging himself to the ground and saying, "Oh, for God's sake, that's a dive." live on commentary because I think people are beginning to get to the territory now yeah. where they're getting a bit fed up with it and Danny's yeah. absolutely right what you see without fans inside the ground is the eye is drawn to the actual instances all the time and you're seeing and hearing football at its finest and at its worst at times mm. so I do I do think it it, it it does need to be pointed out and kept on because it is now getting to the point where it's, it is, I said last week, and I'll say it again, not just because I want to get some clickbait mentality, I think it's contemptible. I think he's a good enough player not to have to play that way. Yes, I, absolutely. And it, and it baffles everybody why he does do that. 